Welcome to the Launchpad. My name is Zachary Auburn, and I am joined by Scott Wilson for our countdown to launch coverage for Artemis 1. Scott, thank you so much for joining us today to just get us started. Can you tell us how you're involved in the Artemis program and what got you here today? Yeah, um, so my name's Scott Wilson. I, I've worked for uh, NASA for about 30 years now, and I worked for the Orion program. So that spaceship, the white spaceship you'll see on the, the rocket when it rolls out, uh, I lead a team that assembles that. So we have hundreds of thousands of parts that come in, and out of our shop comes the spaceship here. Well, over 30 years you've been with NASA and having worked both on shuttle and now SLS, what are the biggest differences that excite you? I think I think the going to deep space, so shuttle was a really terrific program. It, it let us learn how to live and work in space, but we really did that about only a couple hundred miles away from the planet. And uh, with uh, exploration now in the SLS and Orion capsule, we're able to go to deep space, so places like the moon and Mars. So that's pretty exciting to me that we're starting to move further away from the planet like that. We're finally here at rollout. What does this mean personally to you to finally get to see SLS and Orion rolling out to the pad? So, so we'll roll out, we'll have the wet rest, uh, we'll roll back in, prepare the spaceship and, spaceship and the uh, launch vehicle, and then launch. Uh, we're going to go out to the moon for several weeks. We'll spend in, in lunar orbit testing out the system uncrewed and uh, come back and land. And uh, that really paves the way for us to do the crewed missions, which will be next, followed, you know, first one will be crew around the moon, followed by Artemis three, which will be uh, the first, uh, you know, first mission onto the moon in quite some time. As we all get ready for launch, what type of testing and experiments can we look forward to to occur during the Artemis 1 mission? Yeah, so the main thing we're trying to learn, and this is the first time we put the Orion capsule onto the SLS rocket, so we want to test out all those systems before we put our friends in it, you know, for the first crewed mission. And so the things from Orion we're looking for is uh, how do our systems work in the environment of space, right? And, and can they work long term? We've designed them all, we've tested them as much as you can on the ground, but things like the heat shield, for instance, uh, when we come back from the moon, we come in at about 25,000 miles an hour. Uh, it gets about 5,000 degrees on the heat shield, and the crew would be sitting about this side, you know, about three or four feet off the heat shield. And so systems like that we want to go test out in ways that you can't really test them on the, on the planet. So we're here for the rollout of Artemis 1, but we're looking to the future. What preparations have already begun for Artemis 2 and 3 and beyond? We've heard NASA talk to maybe up to nine Artemis missions in the future. Yeah, great question. This one's near and dear to my heart. So I know we're focused on Artemis 1 here today, but about three miles away from here uh, in, in our shop here, we have Artemis 2 and 3 being prepared. And we just did our first welds on the Artemis 4 crew module in New Orleans. So uh, I know we're focused on one today, but we're already building the one that's gonna, gonna land the next people on the moon. That's so exciting. With additional and more complex goals and tasks being added to each mission, is it something that we could see the cost of these missions increase, decrease, or maybe stay stable as more gets added? Um, I'm, my knot hole is, is Orion, so I'll talk to that. I think we're expecting costs to go down, and what we're trying to do, these first couple flights are really test flights to understand the design of a system, make sure we've got everything dialed in and right. And we're working a whole series of uh, what we call affordability options. And the biggest one of those for us is reuse, right? So on this mission, we're reusing a lot of the high value components, but not the entire structure. We have a lot of sensors on this mission and the next one that are gonna help us begin to reuse more and more of the structure. And as we do that, uh, the costs of each mission are gonna go down. And what do you think about going back to the moon? What does it mean personally to you? Think about yeah, so it's, it's funny. I was a little kid when we landed on the moon, very little, like, and don't really remember much of that. But uh, I'm a dad of two daughters. And to me, the idea that this rocket we're sending here is the first steps we're making to putting the first woman on the moon. Um, personally, I can't wait to see that, sit with my daughters and watch that. And as we enter this new era of space exploration and get ready to go back to the moon, a new generation's looking to their future. What advice or encouragement would you give to this Artemis generation? I'd say just uh, keep studying in school, keep uh, watching what we do, and uh, just have that desire to explore and find new things. And I think most kids have that. Um, just don't don't sell yourself short. You can do it. You know, a place like NASA has room for everybody. There's astronauts who kind of get a lot of the press from it, right? But there's folks like me in engineering. There's people who do uh, press and media and uh, analysis and all different uh, fields that you can go into. So just uh, don't stop trying and don't sell yourself short. Just come out here and you can do it. Thank you so much for joining me here on the Launchpad today, Scott. Yeah, thank you. 
And if you enjoyed today's interview, make sure you engage that like button. Let us know what you thought down in the comments. I'll be speaking with more of the Artemis team, so make sure you keep an eye out for those interviews. And subscribe and join us back here on launch day for exclusive launch pad coverage from the NASA Kennedy Space Center press site as we count down to the historic first launch of the Space Launch System and NASA's return mission to the moon. Here at the Launchpad, it's our mission to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow because we believe that space is better together. My name's Zach. We'll see you next time.